Hey all, it's Mr. Borowski, and today we are going to be covering Lesson 5, Variables. So before we get into the actual lesson, we really need to know what a variable is. And a variable is it's, it's kind of hard to explain. It's a lot easier to show. But what I did is I went ahead and I plugged a, the question into ChatGPT, and here is what it came out with um, in sixth grader terms. And a variable is a, a variable in programming is like a storage box where you keep information you give the box a name so you can find it later so we can put anything we want in that box and and we're going to call it a box we can call it a box we can call it whatever we want but whatever we put in that box we're going to be able to go in and we can get it out and it's just a name for the box is the variable so let's go ahead and take a look at step number one so for step number one for our code.org um, um, lesson five uh, what they're telling us to do is read the code below and make a prediction where the circle will be drawn and what what will happen if you change the number in line one so line one right here is 50 and so this what we're doing here is we're, we're declaring what's called a variable we're saying that we need to use a variable var means variable for programming and the variable is going to be x position and we're setting that value for the variable at 50. So anywhere we see X position, um, X position, the computer program is going to plug in the 50. So we're saying 50 is equal to, or in our box labeled X position, we have 50 whatever. And so when the when we run the program, the computer is going to go to that box labeled X position, and it's going to take out the 50 and put it here. So when we run this program, what, what the computer is going to run, is they're going to see ellipse, so it's going to draw an ellipse, it's going to draw a circle, and the position for X is going to be 50. So if we look right here, and we can see that X is 61, so we want it to be 50. So we want to go down a little bit lower, down lower. So we got 50 right here, and then we want the Y position to be um, 350, so we need to go up a little bit higher. So right here, so it, right here, it says that X is 50 and Y is 351. And so what we're going to do is when we run this, it should be a circle that's going to, um, and the center of the circle should be right there. And so if we run it, that's, what, that's what's going to happen is now we've got a circle and it's down here. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the, the um, skill two. And also make sure you click finish in order to move on to the next skill. So we're now going to move on to um, puzzle two. All right, for the puzzle two or for skill two, what they're telling us to do is we there's an, this is another predict. So anytime we see predict right here, we know that we got to type something in here. So in which corner of the screen will the circle be drawn? Well, let's take a look at what we have for our code. So in the code, we are declaring, or we're saying that we need a box of um, labeled X position. So we got a variable X position. And in that box, we're going to put 300 of something, $300, 300, whatever. And then we're also going to get another variable. And that variable is we're going to label this box or this variable. What's the Y? So that's the name of the box or the name of the variable. And in that box is 100. So the third piece of code or the third line of code we are now telling the computer to go ahead and draw an ellipse or draw a circle with x position so this is a variable so we're going to go up here and we're going to look at what's x position what's in that box for x position and we see that it's 300 so x position means 300 so 300 is going to be somewhere over here so so, so 300 is going to be right here for x and then the next variable what's the y so ellipse x is 300 for right here we're going to be looking for 100 so we go we're going to go um in order to figure that out we're going to say all right well here's our variable what's the y so we're going to go up to the variable and it says variable what's the y and it is telling us in that box is 100 so x position is 300 because that's what the variable that's in that box for the variable and what's the y in that box is 100 so we need an x 300 y 100 and so we need to go down a little bit to get that y higher so right there is about 100 for y and right here is about 300 for x so our circle should be right about here or our lips should be right about here and so we're going to say um, top right
All right, so right here we're going to go ahead and top, type in top right. And once we do that, we're going to click run, and we can see that the, um, the ellipse or the circle is generated in the top right like we predicted. All right, let's go ahead and go to step three or skill set three or puzzle three. And again, we can't forget to click finish, so we go ahead and click finish and then hit continue, and then we'll move on to the next. Hey all, for step number three, or um, bubble three, or skill three, what they want us to do is, um, what we're doing is we're changing variables, so they want us to update the variable, update the values of the variable below, so the ellipse is drawn at the bottom center of the screen. So we want the ellipse to be drawn somewhere around here. So here's what we need to do. Um, so do this. Change the values of the variable. So our variables are right here. VAR variable X position VAR. What's the Y? So that's our two variables. Change the value of the variables to update the position. You do not need to add any more blocks of code. Just update the um, blocks. <coughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we need to get the position of the um, ellipse in the um, bottom center. So let's make sure that's correct. Um, change the value of the variables to update the position of the ellipse. So if we run the ellipse, it's in the top, and we draw, want to drop it down here. So it's right here. So we want to go ahead and change the Y position because the Y position is way up here, like 137, 100. And we want it to be somewhere closer to about 300. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to click on the Y position. And instead of 100, we're going to change that to 300. So when we run it, now we've got it at the bottom center. So is that what they're looking for? Change the value of the variables to change the position of the ellipse. Uh, you do not need to do any code. So update the position, update the value of the variable so the ellipse is drawn at the bottom. Well, that's exactly what we've done. So we are finished with this one. Let's go ahead and move on to number four. All right, all for puzzle four or first step four, what we are doing is debugging. So we're getting rid of the bugs. So for this step, we are doing a debug, which means, or what we're doing is naming variables. So this program has multiple errors caused by bad variable um, labels. So when you're labeling variables, there is a specific way you do need to do it. The error prevents the program from being viewed in block code. So the code is in text. So we've got, instead of being um, block, it's actually text. Below are some of the rules that we need to use for naming variables. <coughs> so the first rule, labels can't have spaces. So variable names cannot have spaces. Variable names can't start with a number, so we can't have a number. And capitalization and spelling must be exactly the same. So if we have a variable up here, it means must be explicit down here as well. So what we need to do find the rule each variable label violates and correct the errors by picking new names that um, follow the rules above and then finally if your program works it should draw the image on the right you should also be able to switch back to block mode all right so we can't get to block mode because we've got a lot of errors we need to fix them first variable size of circle well guess what we have spaces in here so that is violating this right here. So labels can't have spaces or variables cannot have spaces. So I just got rid of those by, well, removing the spaces. The next problem right here, and we got a little triangle right here that's saying, hey, we like it. Is it fine, but it's not called in your program. Size of, size of circle. So we got the size of circle. We fixed that here. However, we still have to fix it down here because if we corrected it here, we have to correct it here. So let's correct it there, and we'll correct it here, and let's see if it likes it. Oh wait, we got the size of circle twice. We need to correct it here, and then we'll correct it here. And does it like it? I'm sure it will. All right, so the next thing, we need to go ahead and take a look at is going to be the second variable, and that variable is one dimension. So we can't have a one start um, leading off in a variable, so we need to get rid of that one. And if we get rid of that one there, we need to get rid of the one here. So we'll go ahead and remove that, and that should take care of that problem. 
And then the next one, Y location. Well, Y location looks really good here. It's a lowercase Y and a capital L. However, right here, we've got a capital L and a capital Y. So we need to fix it over here and make it a lowercase Y and then keep that as a capital L. So once we once I do that, it looks like we've um finished we've removed all the bugs. So let's run it. And it looks pretty good. So we've got the circle just like that, and that we've got it right there. All right, so it looks like we're done with four. Let's move on to five. We'll go ahead and click on finish and move on to the next. All right, for the lesson or step five, let's see what they want us to do. So using a variable many times. So we can use one variable many, many times, and it just repeats itself. Um, so this program, this program has only one variable called pedal size. So the variable right here, variable, pedal size, and it's got pedal and the size, no spaces, doesn't start with a one, so it's good. Um, but it uses it eight different times. So what we're doing is we've got pedals, pedal size here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got it eight different times. Using um, this pedal size as a variable, what it does is it makes it easy um, for us to quickly change the value of the variable and it's going to um, update the um, program. So what we need to do, update the code so the um, red pedals touch each other. Change the number assigned to pedal size until the red pedals um, touch. Uh, try to find the size that makes the most sense. Compare your answer with somebody else. All right, so first thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this and you see where the pedals are right here? Well, they're not touching. So we, we need to change the size of the pedal until they touch. So right now it's at 50, so let's move this up to 75. So we're gonna change the pedal size to 75 and run it. And now the pedals are touching. They're actually overlapping, so it's probably a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and change this down to 60 and see what happens, all right? Once we change it to 60, well, the pedals aren't touching anymore. So let's try this at 65, and we'll run it at 65, and we're still not touching. So let's go at 68, and we'll reset it. And we're getting closer, so let's put it back at 70, reset, and run it. And we're still not touching, so let's go with 72, reset it. And now we've got our pedals touching, and we can see they're touching right here, right here, right here, and right here. So it's touching, and we can change the size accordingly, but that's going to finish this level. So let's go ahead and move on to level six. All right, so for level six, what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice, um, we're gonna do the variable practice, and we're gonna do A. And once you're done with A, make sure you do B, C, D, um, B, C, and D on your own. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do um, A uh, together. All right, so for this one right here, I'm going to go ahead and reset it. So when you, if you ever need to reset it, go to version history and click on start over and then click start over. And a shout out to Ronald for showing me how to do that. All right, so for this right here, this assignment, what they're telling us to do, this program uses a, uh, the variable circle size. And we can see variable VAR is declared. And then circle size is equal to 400. So we're going to have a, a circle of 400 to control the width and the height of the circle. If you make the circle big enough, it'll fill up the entire screen as in the picture. So right here is the um, screen. And if we run this, we've got the circle right here. But it's not filling up the whole. We still have area here, 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 and here that's not filled. We, we need to fill the whole darn thing up. So we need to change the value assigned of circle size so that the circle fills up the entire screen. All right, so let's reset that, and we're just going to kick this through the roof. Let's go, let's just double it, and let's go to 800. So instead of 400, we're going to run 800, and ba-bam. We now have that circle fill up the complete screen, and we are finished with that one. All right, and so what y'all are going to do is you're going to go back into here. Go back into here. And right here, you're going to run this. And what you're going to do is you are going to take a screenshot now of the um, code.org. So your screenshot should include your screenshot should include the um, square all the way over, and then this right here, and then make sure that you include the top as well. So get your screenshot. 
And once you do your screenshot, just go over to the assignment and it should, should look similar to this and submit it. And once you're done with that, you're then going to go ahead and do seven and eight. So you're going to do all of six practice and you're going to do the assessment and then you're going to do all the challenges. So to finish some seven, eight, six, seven and eight on your own. All right. Well, best of luck and uh, yeah, good luck.